Okay, good evening everyone. I'm just waiting for more other students to join in. Uh, while they are joining in, uh, let's uh, discuss what we are going to do today. So today, uh, I'll go through a process of content aware fill inside After Effects. Also, 3D projection, which is uh, like a, a very good concept that uh, is used inside After Effects and which creates a lot of good effect okay and it's a something which is uh, highly recommended uh, whenever you're doing any sort of 3d projection and those kind of things and then we will do the 3d shadow okay first we will work on the 3d shadow so i will go back to my after effects here okay and inside after effects i will bring those files which we worked last time if you remember okay so and you all were uh, I told you all that how that uh, there should be a shadow and I taught you a method of adding a shadow inside your project okay so here we will see another method of adding a shadow and that is a 3d uh, shadow uh, you can say a 3d shadow sort of a uh, process okay uh, where we create 3D layer, 3D camera, and then we add shadows. In the uh, new version of uh, After Effects, you sometimes do uh, like uh, most of the time you don't need the camera, so you can do without the 3D camera in new After Effects. But uh, for some uh, animations, for some stuff, you need a 3D camera. Okay. So now I have this screen, uh, this uh, video. Okay, and I'll make a, a new composition out of this video. And you can see this is a video we worked on last time. Now, first thing I need to do here is that I want to garbage out the mask um, to make a, a garbage mask. So I will go a bit here in the end. And I will try to remove some of his uh, masking areas here. Okay, and then I will press M on the keyboard and I will choose inside here none so I can at least see the mask what's going on. So this is what we did in the last part when we were masking him out. Okay, so what this will do is that this will help us uh, to create uh, a garbage mask and because most of the stuff I don't want here. So that's why I will create a garbage mask so it will be less a uh, load on the chroma key. Okay. So I will go back and forth just to see everything is okay. will take uh, not too much uh, time to do this but you have to perfect it out you can start putting mask any anywhere okay it's up to you in the end in the beginning it's totally up to you so I'm doing from ending and then I'm going back and forth So it is uh, not something that you have to put mask, uh, you know, maybe in the end, maybe in the end, uh, like in the beginning, in the middle. So it doesn't matter. It all depends on uh, your uh, your own process, like where you feel comfortable to do that. Okay, your own planning will work here.
you you have to click on the pen tool and then you start drawing the map that's all because i cannot repeat as i have uh, went uh, all the way through here it will again i have to spend a lot of time to fix it so uh, you just uh, after this video you can uh, you can watch the video again so you can see from where i started okay it's just you have to click on this masking pen and draw it this is already we have done it in the uh, in the last class okay so this is the same thing so i'm not doing anything new i'm just repeating what we did in the last class so it's the whole thing process you have to choose from here uh the masking none the mask option you have to be none okay when you are done then you can press subtract okay sorry uh add and then you will have this okay and i will turn on this transparency so i can see the background transparent not black that's what that's how you have to do now i'm done with this let me save this part and now what i will do here is that i will start removing the background i will choose the key color or let me do one thing i have here one plugin which is called uh like a key correct okay it is uh, like a king a suite from red giant so it's a plugin which i bought and it's a very good plugin inside there are a lot of different kind of things here to fix your uh, map okay and other than that we have uh, here one more tool which is let's go I gotta find it here. Let me search. Okay, it's basically it's a very good tool when you want to remove any uh, like any screen. It's a very quick and fast way to remove. So if you can download that, because already I have taught you how to use the chroma keying and uh, all these kind of keying options, but now I will tell you how if this tool can work. If any one of you is interested, if you are buying it and if you have it already. So you can use this tool. This is a, a very good tool. It is from Red Giant. So actually, I bought this uh, whole uh, like suite from there. And one of uh, the plugin that comes with the suite is uh, it's called Premade. Okay, so it can uh, remove very nicely, easily all your uh, your lacoma key. So let me find where it is because yeah, here it is. Premix here. Okay, I will apply here on my effect. And once I'm done, it will take me to my effects here. Okay, and and there are a number of different ways I can do this. Uh, this is auto define. So if I will click on auto define it will automatically remove everything from here it will count it and then i can do the changes okay or what i can do here is that i can simply reset this one okay now one by one i can do this so this is i have to choose the color i will click here choose draw the line here on the color which i want to remove okay once i will do that i will have this and keep on drawing lines over here the one that you want to remove okay then what you have here is this one uh this one will help you to 
modify uh, further. Okay, so I'm done with the background part. Let's see uh, alpha. Okay. Now I'm done. Now I have the mat tool. What does the mat tool will do? It will try to uh, bring my now. Now this one is uh, for the foreground. Okay, so this will help me to bring my details back that I lost. So I will take this tool, draw on the foreground, and when I will draw on the foreground, you can see the details are coming back. Now if I will go back to my alpha. From here, you can see it's, it's very clear. I can draw more here. Okay, and easily you can see that everything is now very perfect. Now I can do some changes here. Okay, like a, a mat shrink so that these outline can be shrink because if you will see that. There is a weird bad outline over here. Let me make it full screen. Okay, so I can go to the shrink mat here. Maybe I will type the five. Five, I think it's too low. Maybe 25. Now, as you can see, it is shrinking. Maybe 50. Okay, better. Now I can blur this out. Maybe five percent. Five is too much. So maybe two. Two is fine. And then I can see there is some issue here. I can click on that one. So it is just like click and then you will get all the settings done automatically here. Okay, so by spending a very less time, I was able to remove everything perfectly and using a very less tool over here. There are a lot of other tools, but you know, I didn't spend much time. Okay, so uh, if you lose some details, you can use this tool. Okay, uh, if you want uh, anything which is not color corrected, you can use this. And if you want to decrease opacity of some areas, you can use this too. Okay, so I don't want to go in details because this is just a plugin. So if I will go here, let me save this file. Okay, and now I will play this. So you can see that it is moving nicely over here, but I'm losing details here. So what I will do, I will keep this one selected, uh, drag over here, oops, go to this tool, this plugin here, take this tool and draw over here on the leg. Now it is back on track, I can see the leg as well, okay. Okay, now what I need only here is that I need to put the background. I will put my background here underneath. Okay, it's too big. I will reduce the size. Okay, and see. So I have to adjust the size and position of my background basically. Instead of moving him, I will move or moving the background, I will move him down. Okay. Now what else I can do here in this plugin, it gives me more other options, key correct. Okay. Like alpha cleaner, if I want to clean uh, the alpha, okay, it will look more nice. Okay. So that also I can do. So the quality will be good. So you can see without, not too much different, but it will make it nicer. Let me remove this, otherwise my video will become more heavy. Uh, key, correct, uh, key correct, I have some here, edge pillar. Okay, and one which I really like is the uh, light wrap. So 
So what the light wrap will do, let me turn off my mask from here. So I, I, otherwise this mask is annoying me. So I will turn it off. I will go 100% view. Close this one. Now here in the light wrap, it asks me operation wrap only compound background. So I will choose wrap only or compound background, I think. What it will do, it will automatically match my footage with the background. So background uh, blur, I, if I will use it, so what I will do on the edges, it will give me the background color. So right now there is no uh, much, I have to increase the brightness. Okay. Oops, sorry, I forgot to do one thing. I have to choose the background layer over here, which is this one. Okay. And that's all. Now, if I will do these kind of just changing, so you can see on the background, on the side, it is giving me the same color of this. Okay. I can increase the uh, brightness. It is too bright, so maybe 0.2 will work. Okay. And that's all. Blur maybe 30. And what else I can apply here is that key correct. If I will go here, there are uh, smooth screen, rack, focus, color matcher. So if I will choose color matcher, it will ask me uh, what is your background. So target layer, uh, your target layer is my blue background. And as soon as I will choose, you can see that it started to match the color automatically. So I can increase the strength of color match. So you can see now it is 100% matching. And I can change manually these uh, parts as well. Like highlights, I want more red to be applied and blue. Because more red and more blue is there. And that's all. And you can see that easily it has applied. Other things you can do later on like, uh, you know, you can use brightness on contrast and you do sort of contrast of it and uh, also maybe a little bit brightness you can decrease or something and then this one i can drag over the color match so it will apply this first and then this so kind of look good but what is uh, what it is missing right now is the shadow now shadow i will not use this plugin because i use this plugin because I already taught you how to do uh, all this stuff without the plugin. So that's why I use the plugin just to show you that there are some plugin available uh, which will help you to create nice effect. Okay. But here what I will do is that I will try to uh, add shadows. Okay. But uh, without using the uh, plugin. So the background is little uh, like a you can say darker so I can go to in the color correction and use little exposure over here I can use kind of little exposure here to make it a little brighter okay and I will make the quality quarter so that we can we are able to see uh, everything clearly later on i can fix this one let me pre-render it so if i'm going back and forth it doesn't hang so he's uh, walking but without a shadow now how to add a 3d shadow so to add a 3D shadow, I need a first a 3D layer. So what I will do, I will hide him for a while. Okay. And then go to new solid. Now the shadow will appear nicely on the uh, white color. So I will choose the color of this white solid. Uh, you know, like uh, this solid as a white color, so it will sh uh, show. And I will call it Shadow Catcher. 
okay so it will be a plane that will catch the shadow and you can make it a little bigger i made it 2000 by 2000 you can make it 2000 by 2000 later on also you can make it bigger and then i will press ok and i will make sure this is on top of uh, the blue screen uh, sorry the it's on top of the uh, my background not uh, on top of the the chroma key okay so here i am done i will make this 3d once i will make this 3d you will notice that i have this 3d option here available okay and i can rotate it the way i want like this flat and i can move it down and all i want to do is that try to match this one with this so at the moment because it's all plain i cannot see how i can or match it correctly so i can go to effect and generate grid so this effect i will apply now you can see there is a grid over here now this grid is little bit uh, thinner for me so i will make i will go in the uh, settings here and change the grid settings from 5 to 10 so it will become a little thicker maybe more thick 15 yeah now it's better so i can see it clearly now i can use this to adjust the position of it okay i think now it looks perfect so it's just matching with the background so my whole goal was to match everything with the background okay uh the one that i am uh, i was using is a plugin it's not it doesn't come free with the with the after effects okay you have to download it it's called uh key suite uh, from uh, red giant okay so i will Go here, un unlink this to change the size of this grid. Only thing you have to do is that you have to match this with the floor of this background. Now it is perfectly matching and I can turn off my grid. Okay. Now once I have done, I can go and add a camera now. Okay. Usually we don't need the camera, but right now we do need the camera because we have to uh, do the linking and all those things so that's why i need a camera here okay the name of the plugin is red giant okay it's called red giant and it's called a red giant keying suite okay now i have it here uh okay one more thing yeah that's fine I can increase the size of it more, but no need as only the person is over here. So if, even if you leave it this way, it will be fine. Okay. Now, uh, because I don't have to change the camera settings here, the reason is that because um, this view is already flat view and it's pointing straight. If it was not pointing straight, then I have to change the camera, uh, you know, direction and all those things. Now. Once you are done, uh, then uh, what we are going to do here is that we will turn on this guy, make him 3D also. Okay, so he is also 3D, but issue is that he is appearing, sinking inside this, uh, what you call uh, floor. Now let's see why he's sinking inside the floor. I can go in my top uh, two views horizontal and this view I will turn this to right view or left view. Now where is this guy? It's here. Now he is under this. Okay. So what I will do here is that for the best result I will take this uh, background sorry the floor and instead of making it little bit slant if i press r over here you will see it is 271 degrees 
instead of that i will give it to 80 sorry not 280 completely flat <clears throat> So 270 I will give it to it so it will become completely flat once I will do this you will notice this guy is here and floor is here so he have to be above the floor so I have to go press P on my keyboard and position him upward so he will be right let me hide the camera for now so he will be right over the back of uh, this door. Okay, so he's right over the floor now. But issue is that uh, now the scene uh, criteria is a bit changed, but this is if I will if he will go further he it will look like this okay so what I can do here is that I will go to the position okay and make sure it's not too far Okay, now it seems fine. Now if I will go back here. Okay, he is now going inside. So what I will do here is that. At this part where he is going down, I will move him up. So where he is going down, I will move him up. Oops, sorry. Keyframe. You have to add a keyframe, then move them up. And now I will go here in the beginning. Okay, I think uh, instead of moving this guy back uh, down and up, it's better to make a null. Okay, make the null 3D and parent him with the null. That will be much more better. And we can animate the null. Okay, because uh, Directly animating him is causing a problem. So here you can see he goes in the air. Okay, now it's fine. Now I can go back to one. So simply what uh, what we did is that uh, we just made him 
not to sink in the ground because he was sinking inside the ground so to avoid that i did some this sort of changing here okay so that he stays on the ground here now what we need to do here we have already applied a 3d uh, his layer as, as a 3d layer okay and now i need to put a light over here which will cast a shadow of him so i will go to the uh, layer new and solid and light okay and what kind of light i want to add over here i want to add a light which is basically point light like intensity 100 is fine cast shadows should be checked darkness 100 shadow diffusion 0 everything else is as this is nothing i will change it and i will add as soon as i will add you will see that the, the light is casting the shadow okay now what i want here is that to do some kind of changes now okay now i will go to this actor okay and I want to see his 3D properties because it's a 3D layer. To see the 3D properties, you have to press A on your keyboard twice. So I will press twice, so I will get these properties here. Now what I need to do here is that I have to first uh, do some of the changes here. Here I have to uh, go and press on the cast shadow so that his shadow will fall on the ground okay so now you can see his shadows is falling on the ground okay and then accept light i don't want it to accept the light so accept lights i have to turn it off so no light will fall on it only he will produce shadow but no light will fall on it otherwise it will look uh unrealistic over here okay so that's all what i will do here now i will go back to my floor shadow catcher aa now here i don't want it to cast the shadows because this should receive the shadow but it should not cast the shadow so i will keep the cast shadows off accept lights also off okay so only it will receive the shadows now this is what i wanted here i will close this now the mode of this i will turn this from normal to multiply and you will see there is a shadow on the floor okay so uh, one more thing i can do here is that i can press p on my keyboard and on the null and move him a little bit back here okay That's fine. Okay. Now, uh, what else I can do here is that I can press shift scale. Okay. I can go and put one keyframe here, one keyframe in the beginning, and I will make him a little bit smaller. And move this down. Right. Here I will also move this. Here, also move a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Now uh, everything is fine here because you have to adjust a null object to match. Okay, and when you will try it for three times, so uh, you. Uh, you will be able to do this now i will go to the light and now i have to do the aa twice for the light settings okay now in the lights i have to go to the shadow diffusion and you will see the shadow is too dark too much uh, you can say uh, hard so i want a soft shadow so i will change its pixels to 95 percent 
so it will get little softer okay so uh, the shadow is big we know uh, because we are still uh, adjusting it so once adjusting is uh, done then it will be fine okay now uh, i will go back here on my two view now here i will go to top view now inside the top view i will uh, let me go a little bit further and you can see i can see the shadow now okay from the top view port this is from the top how it looks like this is my light so now i have to go press p on the light and change the light position to get the shadow like i want okay so if i will go a little bit further z axis okay so you can see that the shadow will be falling behind okay because lights are here so the shadow should be under him so let's do one thing let him move a little bit closer here and now i will try to adjust the light so i know where the light is going so i will go right over him okay so now the light is here now to make the shadow smaller if the light source is a very far away so what happens like look the light is here so if i will move the light up you can see the shadow is becoming smaller if i will move the light down the shadow will start becoming bigger so if i want a smaller shadow i will move the light upward so i will move the light up and you can see the side of the shadow here I don't want it to be too small, just this much is big. Oh, fine. Now I'm done. So you can see that if he's far away, it will be like this. And when he comes here, it will be like that. But at this stage, what I will do is that I will take my uh, point camera and also make null its parent. I will take this click, click, click on the null. Now null has become uh, became the parent of the light. Now, wherever the null is moving, the light is moving. Okay. So the light will move with the null. Okay. And if you want to change the settings of the lights, you can go in the position of the light. Okay. And you can move the light up or down. I will move it up so I can get a little bit smaller shadow. Okay. Now, if I will come in closer, I'll start bringing it a little bit down, but not too much. And here, a bit more down because he falls. Okay. And here, I will move it a bit here because he moves his position. So this is how you can do that. Uh, actually, I don't have to move it down because light should be there. He is moving. So why should I uh, move the light? I'll keep the light as it is. Okay. So this is how I have applied the shadow and the shadow will be always under him. Okay. So he will start walking here. Okay. Actually, we are just... Uh, it's not pre-planned so he's walking around otherwise I, like there are some other like, techniques you or like other things you have to set up then it will look fine because he's moving around and uh, we, we we are doing without the plan so when you have a plan so it will be fine okay because he's above the ground the actor is above the ground a little bit so i have to move the actor a little bit down so the shadow will be there okay so maybe if I can move the actor down, then you can see his shadow is on the floor. Okay. So that's how you can add a 3D shadow here. So here also I will move him a little bit down so he can be attached to the ground. Now it's fine. Okay. So any question regarding the shadow or the 3D shadows? Is everything clear?
So this is how you can add a shadow. What if you don't want to add a shadow? So here what I can do is I can delete my null. I can delete my everything. Keep everything normal like it was before. Okay. No shadow catcher. Okay. And this one I have to go here and reset its value and just I will move them down scale also reset the value here at the scale now he's back to normal now one more thing the same effect which I applied over here there is one effect here which is called okay here if you will go to key correct and there is I think there is somewhere here yeah red giant warp uh, shadow okay so if you have if I will apply over here you can see there is a shadow down here I can change the shadow direction to wherever I want okay maybe I can put it down here okay and just I have to change this part it can go under it can go forward further it can go up here okay something like here or in front of him so this is the direction and this is what this is the uh, straight direction that you can also do oops okay now what else I can do here is that I can change the opacity softness this does not look soft so maybe I can make it 15 it will become more softer or maybe 50 more softer opacity 100% so it can show okay and softness type you can choose different softness simple softness map map uh, progressive linear progressive square so I like uh, map map so I will use map map or simple or I think progressive linear is fine quality high you can do keep uh, and everything you can do some color correction over here as well okay uh, transfer mode based on light or based on uh, multiply okay so I will use based on light so so this is quite a good sort of a result here you can see the shadow is under him all the time okay so uh, here maybe you can do some uh, changes here in the end because it goes away from his body okay so maybe here you can do some animation or like uh, you can add some keyframe to the shadow itself okay like you can go to shadow here and then you can do the keyframe here of the shadow Okay, so here I can add the keyframe for this and here I can move this here. So that's all. Simple. So now it will stay over uh, with him all the time. Other thing that you have with this tool is if I will go here. Okay. Uh, red giant warp and there's a reflection so if I will add reflection there will be a reflection under him so there is a reflection here I can put this reflection on here okay 
and reflection is also showing a shadow so let me turn off the shadow only for the reflection just to show you okay there is a front lid back lid so you have this sort of shadow you can increase the softness of the shadow oh sorry reflection we are talking about the reflection fade you can start fading the shadow okay so i can do some sort of fading so it will be not 100 percent there okay And these are some settings here. So you can see how the shadow is attached to, or the, the reflection is attached, attached to him. So I like the more reflection stuff because this whole thing is causing a reflection on the ground. If I will add a reflection, it will make it more realistic. Okay, so you can see there is a shadow under him. Okay, so reflection suits more because there are a lot of lights. You will not see a lot of uh, shadows here, but reflection just like exactly the same way I'm getting the reflection. I can add it here. Almost looks the same. Okay, so this is how you can add a 3D shadow to your uh, 3D artwork. Clear everyone? Now uh, let's move to content aware fill. Okay, so let me do one thing. Oops, what I did. I will save the file and I will create a new project. Okay. Now I need some file here to, to bring it for content aware fill. And then I will tell you some of uh, the things that uh, we use content aware fill for. Okay. Now let me go to the Photoshop here and open a temporary uh, file here. Okay. Let me find a file, a picture somewhere here. So I have opened this file. Now content aware, I'm just giving you an idea what is content aware. You might have used content aware before, but maybe you might uh, have forgotten or you might have not used it before, or you might have used it, but you don't know what this tool is called. So if I will just go here and I want to remove myself from this scene so I can go select it press delete button and when I press delete button it will ask me how you want to delete it do you want to content aware delete it or show a black background or white background I will say okay content aware and I will press okay and when I will do that it will automatically remove me from the scene and try to put things uh, around it so it will fill it with you know uh, the best fit so this is the content aware fill inside the Photoshop. Now, how we can do the same thing inside After Effects? Now, in the new version 2021, because this is I'm using the latest version. This is 2020, but uh, new version of 2020. So if you will see this is uh, the version 17.5 build 40. This is the latest version right now. In this version, we can use it. This is 2020, but little bit uh, latest version. How we can do this? Uh, this sort of thing. So I have this footage here. This is a very simple footage. If you, I will, if I will play this footage, you will see there is a drone that flies over this road. I want to remove this drone from here. Okay. So how I can remove this drone from here? First of all, I will go to the park, maybe somewhere here where I can see him. See this, I will take my pen tool or uh, like this is very simple. So I will take my uh, rectangle tool and I will make a mask on this one just like this. 
Now, issue here is that uh, the mask, let me do one thing. I will feather out the mask also. I will press F on my keyboard. Feather it out around maybe 50. Yeah, 50 is fine. Then I will choose subtract over here. So it will be gone. Okay. Now I can see a hole over here. This is how I want it. Oh, I want it but at this stage I want this mask to uh, animate to uh, follow my drawn so what I will do here I will press M on my keyboard to get the path I will click on path over here also subtract I will change it to none so it actually show everything only I need the border to see so I have one keyframe here I will go a little bit back I will take this, put here, go a little bit back more, and put it here. Now let's see if it is working fine. Okay. Here I think I need to put this a little bit here. Maybe here a little bit. here then this more just i want this mask to follow my object that's all so now you can see let me do one thing go back here subtract so we can see is everything fine okay so looks good I have already masked it out now what I will do here is that I will select my footage make sure you are on the first frame then on your right side you will see content aware fill I will click on the content aware fill as soon as I will do that you will notice there is a uh, content aware option over here which says uh, object so I will keep it object okay because we are re removing an object here. Uh, otherwise there is a surface if you want to remove a surface maybe I want to remove this okay or edge blend which is bit, uh, mixed between both of them but I want to remove object so I will choose object work area range work area from here to here if you don't want the work area entire of uh, duration so it's up to you but my work areas is also entire duration so i i can keep any one of these okay now i have to generate a fill layer but when i press this it will ask me to save the file so now i can save the file okay anywhere here maybe say override this one this is the old file and then it will start analyzing okay analyzing how if you remember uh when we were working on the 3d camera tracking and also also the auto stabilization that also analyzes this is also analyzing right now you can see down and once this analyzing is done then it will start rendering this So a bit time it will take, a little time it will take, and then once it is done, it will start uh, working. Uh, it will start rendering it, okay. And once it will start rendering, then you will see that it will try its best. Not hundred percent, it will be good. Maybe ninety. In some cases, hundred percent also you can get a good result. But it also depends on your footage that you are going to apply the effect on, okay. And also on your mask, how your mask is. So it is taking a little time and this footage right now the one that I am working on is a very simple footage a very simple footage because that's not too much going on here a simple drone is flying over this road 
and that drone is not doing anything here it's just flying over it the camera itself is not moving it's still okay so that means the camera is also still and drone is only flying in a straight or a little bit different direction so you will uh, not see of uh, like you know like you will uh, like simply you don't have to do a lot of work over here automatically everything will be done now you can see it's already analyzed now it starts rendering total frames are 240 so it will take its time and by the way uh, if you don't want to use the map you can also rotoscope any of of uh, any object that you want to remove okay so instead of uh, masking rotoscoping can be also worked here if you want some tighter result okay like if you want a very tight selection because the mask it's a little hard to adjust the mask if you have tighter uh, like tighter sort of uh, uh, like selection to do so you can also use the rotoscoping brush and remove it So almost we are done. Okay. So now it is done. So what I will do here is that I will just go here and play to see the video if it is working fine. So now as you can see the video is playing but I cannot see the drawn on my screen okay because uh, drawn is already removed and it's not showing on the screen but as it is uh, as it's a flat screen okay it's a flat video so it's not too much to uh, uh, like you know identify whether the drawn is removed or not because already it is flat the camera is not moving okay and already the first frame over here was uh blank itself and now you can see this mask is moving here which was a drawn okay so this is how you can remove in uh with the content of inside after effects okay now let's do one thing let me delete this footage here okay this uh, composition let's make a new composition this time with this 
Now this scene is a little bit complicated. Uh, uh, it's a complex scene uh, because I think camera is also moving. And also there are a lot of objects here. Let me see if the camera is moving or not. I think camera is not moving in this one. Let me find something which is where the camera is moving. Let me delete this. By the way, when you will uh, do the content of your fill, it will make all these fill layers. You can see that here. Okay, as a PNG or what? Now here, I think, yeah, now here the camera is also moving and there are a lot of cars here as well. Now, this will be uh, like a challenging one. So what I can do here is that let's find some cars that I want to remove from here. So let's see this yellow car. There is this yellow car that appears. And I don't want this yellow car to be there in my scene. So what I can do here is that I can zoom in here, uh, mask him out. Go here, press M and choose none here. Okay. Now what I can do here is that make it not too tight not too loose this uh, mask actually you might need some space for usually uh, sometimes you need the space so that it can read what to apply so i'll give some sort of a space here but not don't overdo it this much is fine now i will press the mask path here and uh, let's go further Move this path here and then I will change the direction of the path. Now this is a little challenging because the camera is also moving and the video itself, the car itself, the object itself is moving. So this will take a little time. Okay. You have to go back and forth to see everything is okay. Because the car is stopped, but the camera itself is moving. That's why I said it's, it's kind of tricky. Now this car is behind it, so I have to be a little, little bit more careful about it because I don't want to So a little bit of uh, like a little bit of work you have to do here.
a little further on go here. Okay, so it's completely off the screen now. So we are done with this. Okay, so uh, once well, I have to just check if it is working fine. So what I will do here instead of none, I will choose the mask subtract, go here and feather F. You can press F on your keyboard to get the mask of feather. And I will type here 10. And just to see if everything is all right, I'll play it. So it does show me that this car comes. And the car should not show at all in full video. Okay. Good. So done. Now what I will do here is that I will go and generate fill layer. So once I will do this, this will take a little bit more time because this is kind of a, uh, you can say, a bit of uh, like advanced or like kind of a little uh, tricky. Okay, and a little bit complex. The scene itself is a little complex, so that's why it will take a little time to uh, analyze and render. But you can see the analyzing, it's going pretty good right now. It's going a little faster instead of going a little slow like it was doing before. So uh, I think it also depends on the size of your mask. So my mask, maybe the size of the mask is not that big or huge so maybe that could be one plus point okay And it requires a good, uh, uh, like, uh, you can say, um, effort. You have to do a lot of masking. And once it is done, then your result will be perfect. Because at this stage, the result will be not that uh, perfect if, uh, if your mask is not good. So you have to take your time and try to put the mask exactly where you're looking for, whatever you want to remove. So I wanted to remove that yellow car from, uh, from it. I masked it in the whole scene. And it was easy for me because uh, the scene was not too long. It was complex. I had to move a lot like uh, the footage before. It was a little easier because uh, I just have to uh, move it from left to right as, as the drone was just moving in one direction. And also there was no camera movement. Here there was a camera movement and car was moving around in a round uh, like direction here okay so now it is taking a little time because i think it's an it's in the analyzing stage that's why okay so now while it is uh, analyzing let me tell you one thing that after this, 
we are going to start the 3D camera projection. Okay, now 3D camera projection is a, a method, a process that will help you to turn your 2D image into 3D. You can take any 2D image and you can convert that into a 3D image. But it should not be too complex because if it is really complex, then it will take a lot of time to uh, do the 3D projection. Okay, like suppose if you want to make a, a picture which is a landscape where you have mountains and everything, then it will take a lot of manual work to do and it will take a lot of time to uh, convert that into a 3D projection. Uh, but if you have a, a scene where you have only a wall and a floor, just like we put, uh, we use that background for that uh, green screen, that blue screen. So it was a very simple one. It was a wall on the sides, a wall uh, on front, and there was a floor and there was a roof. So very simple. So this kind of, uh, you can say, uh, like a 2D images will be very easy to convert. Okay. So that's we will uh, you see. So I have a tutorial which I got it from Video Copilot, and I did some uh, changes in that. So we will do uh, with that, uh, like we will use that, that tutorial file and also kind of that uh, like that process. So still it is uh, analyzing right now. Uh, we are there halfway through there almost. Okay, so now analyzing is done. Now it will take a little time to do the rendering. And once the rendering is done, you can see that it will uh, remove that uh, yellow car from the scene. So this process in the background, what it uses, it uses the Adobe Sensei, which is the uh, AI based, artificial intelligence based, or you can say, uh, machine learning uh, process based uh, effect here okay now simply you can see that clearly it has removed the car from this part let's see uh, once it is rendered because rendering what it do it uh, will take the pictures and then it will put the pictures back here So guys, what you can do right now is that you can take a 20 minutes break, okay? And after the 20 minutes break, you can come back to Blackboard and I will send you the new link because uh, by the time you will come back from the break, this will be also rendered. And then after the break, we will start the 3D projection, okay? So clear everyone. So let's go on break, take 20 minutes break. And then after that, let's meet on uh, Blackboard and I will give you the link for the next uh, part. We will continue from here and I will give you, okay? So let's go on 20 minutes break. 